taking off out of Billings, the right engine exploded and caught on fire. Wow. I've crashed five times. <laughs> if I had not practiced that in a simulator, I wouldn't be. That's, that's a simple fact. Hey guys, it's Sam. A couple months ago, I had the opportunity to fly a Cessna 172 with Rick Blyseth at WSU Tech, but I had never flown a plane before. Now, as an inexperienced pilot, I wanted to learn a little bit more about how pilots train, so obviously, I needed to use a flight simulator. So I met up with Michael Townsend over at WSU Tech to learn more. Michael, what can you tell us about yourself? I'm 68 years old. I've been flying since 1975. I have got lots and lots of flying hours, and I've been an airline pilot, a corporate pilot, but mostly I've been a flight instructor for the last 38 years. Now, as a flight instructor, I hear that you work a lot with flight simulators. What can you tell me yes. about flight simulators? Um, I am a major advocate of flight simulators. If you have a PC simulator like Microsoft or X-Plane, use it until your monitor explodes or melts. There are so many advantages to a flight simulator over a real airplane other than the cost factor. But the fact is you can fly to almost any airport in the world in any weather conditions or any type of failures that the airplane you're flying can experience. Um, I've trained in a lot of different simulators from 737s to Cessna 172s like this Frasca. And I've flown in simulators for over 15 years. In a flight simulator, what are some of the most important emergencies that you want to be able to like, overcome that you wouldn't want to happen in the real world, but you have to be ready for? Engine failures. Engine failures. And in-flight fires. Those are the most uh, dangerous things that can happen to a pilot is an engine failure very close to the ground, like right after takeoff. Have you ever had an engine failure in flight? Yes, I've had, I've crashed five times. <laughs> well, you're still here, so I assume mm -hmm. you knew how to get through that. Yes, and all of that I attribute to simulator flying. The most dangerous one I had was in Billings, Montana, flying a North American Rockwell Commander. Um, it was with a, an air taxi operator and it was my last training flight and taking off out of Billings, the right engine exploded and caught on fire. Wow. So brought the airplane back around and landed. Um, if I had not practiced that in a simulator, I wouldn't be here. That's, wow. that's a simple fact. A level D simulator, like say of a 737, you can fly the simulator and get what's called a type rating without ever having flown the real airplane. It's that accurate. There is virtually no difference between a level D simulator and the airplane. Wow. The other types are this kind, which are non-motion simulators. They're called a flight training device because this has a Garmin G1000. It's called an advanced training device. This one, you can fail all the types of failures that you would experience in a Cessna 172. It's a lot more cost effective than going up in the airplane where the airplane's a lot more noisy. You're bouncing around and turbulence, you know, there's a lot of traffic to look for, which is other airplanes. So simulator, you can, you can get more done in the sim than you can in the airplane. Sweet. I mean, I'm not going to get into the school's 172 and at 300 feet, chop the engine. <laughs> I will do it in this. <laughs> okay. Any chance I can try the simulator for myself? Yes. Awesome. So would you say that becoming a pilot is a pretty in-demand job right now? Oh, yes. Yeah, the pilot shortage, you probably read about it in the newspapers, magazines, on television. Mandatory retirement for an airline pilot is 60. But if you can pass a medical, you can go to 65. A lot of airlines are offering retirement at age 55. So there's a lot of retirements going on right now, a lot. A commercial pilot with a flight instructor rating is the typical path to like an airline. The pay varies. It just depends on what state you're in, how much experience you have, what kind of flight training you're doing, whether you're training private pilots, instrument, multi-engine, commercial pilots, or flight instructors. But it, you know, it's around forty to sixty dollars an hour as a flight instructor. After you get so many hours, you can apply to the airlines, and they require what's called an airline transport pilot certificate. Normally, to get an airline transport pilot, you need 1,500 hours. If you go to a two-year school, you only need to apply for it uh, about 1,200 hours, 1,240. And if you go to a four-year school, it brings it down another 100. 
That's the advantage of going to a school like WSU Tech is that as expensive as it is to fly, you don't need as many hours. For every minute that you're in the air with a Cessna 172, for example, how much does that cost? Typical 172 is about $250 an hour, $260 an hour. Contrast that with a 737 airplane, it's $130 a minute to fly a 737. So, but if you want to get a 737 type rating, you do it in a simulator for about 8,000. The value of training in this simulator is absolutely immense. So what kind of advice would you give to someone who might be interested in becoming a pilot but isn't really sure, or they're on the line? Come talk to us. Come talk to Rick Blyseth, Abe, or myself. Talk with Rick, and he does what's called a discovery flight. We take you out for like half an hour, 45 minutes on one of our planes. Come out and talk to us, that's the best thing, is talk to people who have been there, done it. Once again, I wanted to thank Michael for the opportunity to try the flight simulator. If you guys are interested in learning more about the pilot program, or maybe you're interested in taking a discovery flight for yourself, check out the information in the description below. This has been Sam from FutureMaker. We'll see you next time.